what some of you freaking genius is. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to graph step functions, all right? And I'm also gonna teach you how to find the domain and range. So let's start by graphing, I guess, the easiest step function, the parent function, all right? So here we have f of x is equal to the greatest integer less than or equal to x, all right? So I know that just sounded like a mouthful and I'm gonna explain in a second, it's actually not too bad. So the first thing we can do here is make an x, y table, all right? This is generally gonna be one of the easier ways to graph step functions, all right? Now we just need to plug in some numbers for x and see what pops out for y. And really, I should be more a little more specific, right? Instead of y, we have f of x, right? So let's see what pops out for f of x. So first, let's just plug in a zero, all right? Let's plug in a zero right there, all right? Well, if we plug in a zero right here, we're going to get zero for f of x. And the reason for that is because whatever number you plug into these cool looking brackets over here, all you have to do is round that down to the nearest whole number, okay? But if it's already a whole number, it's just gonna stay as that same whole number. So zero, it's just a whole number. So that's why our answer is zero, okay? Now let's plug in another number, this time a decimal. Let's plug in 0 0.5, okay? So now if we plug in 0 0.5 into these cool looking bracket things, remember in order to solve this, all you have to do is round that number down to the nearest whole number. So if we round 0 0.5 down to the nearest whole number, that would just be zero again, right? Now what if we plugged into our brackets 0 0.99, okay? Well, again, whatever number we plug in, just round it down to the nearest whole number. So if we plug in a 0 0.99, we're going to round down once again to zero, all right? Now, instead of 0 0.99, what if we just went up a little bit and plugged in a one? Well, again, we wanna round down to the nearest whole number. And one is a whole number. So then this is simply equal to one, right? So if we plug in a one in there, it's gonna spit out just a one. But if, again, we plug in, let's say 1.5 this time, Okay, so rounding down to the nearest whole number, this is again going to be a one. Okay, if we plug in 1.99, again here, this is gonna round down to one. Okay, so now that we have some points here, let's plot them. So first we have a point here at zero, zero, and then at 0 0.50, right? So we have a number right there, 0 0.990, zero, right? So 0 0.99, zero is right there. And then what happens at one? Well, here at one, I'm gonna draw an open circle, and you can see we actually jump up, right? We jump up to one comma one, right? So one, one is right here. So you can see that we basically have a step from zero to one right there, and then we jump up, right? And then here you can see 1.5, 1.99, right? 1.5, 1.99, those are still just at one right there, and that means we'll have another open circle right here because it's gonna jump up to two, right? And we'll have a closed circle right there, and then it'll be flat right here, we'll have another open circle, and so on and so forth. Okay, so in order to graph a step function, you really just need two lines. So that's what we found here, right? This gave us one line, and then this gave us the other line, right? So it was this one and this one. And you only need two lines or two steps because the pattern is always going to continue, right? So if this step is one unit long, then this and this next step was one unit long, well then they're all going to be one unit long long, okay? And as you can see, we put a closed circle on the left side of the step and an open circle on the right. So here's a closed, here's an open, right? Here's closed, open, closed, open, closed, open, right? And we can just keep going on forever. And now lastly, let's talk about the domain and the range. So the domain for all your step functions are, are always going to be all real numbers, and that's the symbol for all real numbers. And the reason for that is because, as you can see, as we move along the x-axis, we're always gonna have some sort of part of the function here. Right, I can extend these steps down here, right? They just keep going back down that way forever. But as you can see, as we move along the x-axis, there's always some sort of function that we're gonna hit, right? Here we are right on top of the function, and then as we keep going, right, there's always some function that we're gonna hit as we move along the x-axis. So we always have some sort of function from negative infinity to positive infinity, or in other words, we can write that as all real numbers. Now, on the other hand, let's talk about the range. So as we come up along the y-axis this time for the range, you can see that we have function at certain parts, right? So we have a function right there, but we don't have any function right here between that space up until we get to the next step, right? So 
The way that we can describe the range in this case is by saying that the range occurs at every integer, or we could just say all integers, right? And integers are just whole numbers, right? So as you can see, we have a range at negative four, and negative four is an integer. We have another range at negative three, and negative three is an integer, right? So negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. So at every single whole number is where we have a function, right? So again, that would just be at all integers. All right, here's the next example that we're gonna do. So now we have f of x is equal to three times this step function x. Okay, so again, the easiest way to solve this would just be by, once again, making a table, all right? So let's plug in some numbers for x and see what pops out for f of x. So first of all, zero is always a good number to start with. Okay, so if we plug in a zero right here, remember whatever we plug into these bracket thingies is gonna round down. So then here we have three times zero, which is equal to zero, all right? Uh, next, let's once again plug in a 0 0.5, okay? If we plug in a 0 0.5 right there, again, that's just gonna round down to zero. So then again, we're gonna simplify this down to three times zero, which is still zero, all right? Now, if we plug in 0 0.99, all right? Still same thing, right? It's gonna round down to zero, and three times zero is zero. Now, what if we plug in a one? If we plug in a one right there, well, then this is just gonna stay as one, and three times one is three. Okay, then if we plug in, let's say 1.5 and 1.99 again, well, these are just both gonna round down to just one, right? So then we're gonna have three times one and three times one, which is three and three. Okay, so if we plot this now, again, starting at zero, we're gonna have a closed circle, right? Because we're including both those numbers. And then we're gonna have a step and it's going to go along until we get to one. So we're going to have a step right here right all along there and then we're gonna have an open circle because right here at one that's where the jump happens and it jumps up from zero to three so it goes from zero up to one two three so then we have a step way the hill up here okay and if this was one unit long this is also gonna be one unit long right and then again it's all gonna be the exact same pattern so we can go down in the opposite direction so here you can see the closed circle is right here so we can go down one, two, three, and then over one, right? So then we'll go down one, two, three, over one. So that means we'll have another closed circle right there. And then this is again, one unit long and an open circle right there. Okay, so that's how we can graph this step function. Now, lastly, let's talk again about the domain and range. So again, the domain is going to be all real numbers, right? It's gonna go all along the X axis. It's always gonna be covered by some sort of function. And then the range, as you can see in this case, has big gaps, right, between the steps. Right, so as we move along the y axis, we have range here, and then there's nothing here, but then we have function there, and then we come up here, and then we have function there, right, and so on. So as you can see, so what integers does it hit this time? Well, it hits this one up here, which is three, it hits this one right here, which is zero, and this, uh, it hits this one down here, which is negative three. So let's write the integers in this range. It's negative three, zero, and three, right? Negative three, zero, and three, but the pattern obviously continues going all the way down, right, towards negative infinity, right, so in the negative direction. So here we'll just say dot, 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 we're just kind of indicating that it continues going back that way, and it also continues going up in the positive direction, right, towards positive infinity. So here we'll say dot, 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 to show that the range continues in that direction as well. And then we'll just put some fancy brackets around these guys so that we can indicate that this is the set of numbers for the range. All right, just a couple more examples here. So now we have f of x is equal to one third x, all right? And as you can see, the, the number is inside of the brackets with the x, right? So again, let's just make a table, plug in some numbers for x and see what pops out. So let's again start with zero, 0 0.5, 0 0.99, and one. Let's just kind of start there, okay? So first let's plug in a zero here. So one third times zero is just gonna be zero and that means we're just gonna get a zero right there. Now let's plug in 0 0.5 right there and we can just write it over here. So here we're gonna get one third times 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 is the same thing as one half, right? So really one third times one half, that's what we're gonna have in here. And that's equal to one sixth, one sixth. And remember whatever number we plug in here, it's just gonna round down to the nearest whole number. So one sixth is obviously going to round down to just zero, right? 
Now, what if we plug in 0 0.99? Well, that's really close to one, so let's just call it one. So let's say one third times one, and that's equal to one third, and one third is obviously gonna round down to zero. Okay, now what if we plug in an actual one? Well, again, like we just saw, one third times one is equal to a third, which again is gonna round down to just zero. So what if we plug in, well, 1.5? 1 1.5 is the same thing as three halves, right? So this is the same thing as one third times three halves. Those cancel out, so then we just get one half, right? So if this is one half, or 0 0.5, that's also going to round down to zero. Okay, looks like we have to keep going a little bit more. What if we plug in a three, okay? Well, it looks like if we plug in a three, so we get one third times three, so then those cancel out. So then here we finally get one, okay? So one will obviously just stay as one, okay? So it looks like it pops up at three, okay? So we have our starting point for our first step at zero, zero. So right here at zero, zero, and then it stays zero the entire way, it looks like up until we hit three, right? So then we're gonna have a straight line all the way till we get to three, and then this coordinate point is at three, one, right? So three, one, right there. So that second step, it's actually gonna get cut off right here, but it's gonna be the same length as this first step, right? All the steps are always the same length. So if this is three units long, that means this one's gonna be three units long, and then we'll have a closed circle at the end, right? But we have enough space to go back the other way, right? So to get from this closed circle to this closed circle, we have to go down one over three, right? So we have to go down one over three. So there we can get our other step, okay? And that's three units long with an open circle. Okay, now let's talk about the domain and the range. So the, the domain is all real numbers, and then the range this time, um, as you can see, right, these steps can just keep going back down in that direction. So as we go up the y-axis, we're gonna have a step here, 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 right? So again, at all the integers, all integers, boom. All right, now this is the last one we're gonna do. So we have f of x is equal to negative two times in the cool brackets, x plus one minus three, okay? So again, in order to graph this, let's just make a table. So let's plug in some numbers, 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.99, and one. That's normally kind of a good starting spot, all right? So first of all, let's plug in a zero into this function. So if we plug in a zero here for x, uh, let's just write it over here. We're going to get negative two, and then we get these, and then we're gonna plug in a zero plus one minus three. So then here, this is gonna be equal to negative two, and zero plus one, that's just equal to one, so then we just get a one in here, all right? And then minus three. So here, this is just gonna pop out as one, okay? And we'll put that in parentheses, since that's the final answer. And then don't forget, we still have our negative two right here, and then the minus three, and so this is gonna be equal to negative two times one, that's just equal to negative two, so negative two minus three is equal to negative five, all right? So we get a negative five right there if we plug in a zero, all right? Let's try plugging in a few more numbers here. So here, if we plug in a 0 0.5, you can actually tell uh, 0 0.5 plus one would just be 1.5, and 1.5 again would just round down to one, right? So we would still get negative five right here for 0 0.5. And for 0 0.99, same thing, 0 0.99 plus one is equal to 1.99, and again, we have to round down to the nearest whole number, so it would again, down, round down to simply one. So then we would get a negative five right here also. But if we plug in a positive one right here for x, uh, let's write it out. So let's plug in a one. So this is gonna be equal to negative two, and then we'll get one plus one, and then we'll close, Ooh, let's keep it white. There we go, and minus three. So this is gonna be equal to one plus one is two, all right, learned that a long time ago, and then we get minus three, so then here this is equal to negative two times two minus three, and negative two times two is equal to negative four, so this is negative four minus three, which is equal to negative seven, all right? So then it looks like that's where the jump happens, right? So let's get rid of this stuff to not clutter everything up. 
All right, now let's plot our first point. So it's at zero, negative five, zero, negative one, two, three, four, five, right there. And then we're at negative five for, it looks like from 0 0.5 to 0 0.99. So 0 0.5, 0 0.99. So we got a step right here. And then at one, it jumps down to negative seven, right? So at one, it jumps down another two spots to right here. So we have an open circle here. And then this is one unit long. So that means this guy's gonna be one unit long also, okay? And then we can go in the other direction, right? So the closed circle, it's up, up two over one, up two over one, up two over one. Right, up two over one, we can go on forever and ever. And then we have open circles right there, All right? Nice. Now, lastly, let's talk about the domain and range. So the domain, again, is going to be, as we move along the x-axis, we're always gonna have some uh, part of the function, so it's all real numbers. And then the range, as you can see, skips over every other whole number, right? So for instance, this step is at negative one, this one's at negative three, negative five, negative seven, right? And then in this direction, we, or we're at positive one, and then we'd go three, five, seven, right? So as you might notice, all these are odd numbers. So for the range, we can simply say all odd integers. Boom. So if you found the video helpful, make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below.